So today we're going to be working on an 820-3787 that has no backlight on the keyboard. Uh, so we turn it on, and I'm just going to show you what happens inside the operating system. It looks like this has already been fucked with to some extent. If we look in the microscope camera, you will see flux, you will see captain tape, and you will see signs that I'm not the first one here. But we know that. We expect that at this point. I'm never the first one. We don't get backlight fuses. We don't get, like, we don't get just JTAGs anymore. We never get the easy stuff. We only get the stuff that nobody else wants. So let's turn this on. I'm going to boot into my operating system, and we're going to see what is going on with this machine. And the first thing I want to do is I unplug the webcam. And the reason I unplug the webcam is because the webcam is also often an ambient light sensor, which is how it tells if there's a lot of light in the room. And I don't feel like having to remember to cover the webcam. If I don't cover the webcam like this, then the light won't come on, and it can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. So we're going to turn this on, and we're going to boot into a test operating system. And the first thing I want to do is see what, what does it register when I hit the backlight up and down keys on the keyboard. I want to see if it registers anything. I want to see if it even knows that I'm hitting the keys at all. If it doesn't tell that I'm hitting the keys, that's going to be interesting to me. All right, so we're going to go inside here. And what, what do you mean that's not my password? That's my ultimate secure password there, right there. One, two, three, four, baby. All right, so when I turn the brightness up, I do get the symbol on the screen. I get the brightness symbol, which means that it knows that I have a keyboard, external keyboard attached, and it, it, but the keyboard brightness is not going up. There's no light on the keyboard. So where would one of you start here on an 820-3787 board that has no keyboard backlight? Check the backlight coil near the driver. Okay, what am I gonna check at the, are you saying check the coil or are you saying check near the coil? If you're saying check the coil, I'm going to have to give you an internet punch right, right in the face. <laughs> yeah, but if you're saying check near the coil, that's a good idea. So I'm gonna go and check near the coil. I'm also gonna see if, if I missed anything here. That uh, doesn't seem like I have. All right, so let's check near the coil, which means minimizing all of the stuff. So checking near the coil, that's a decent idea. No, near it, it gets five volts. All right, so let's look, go on the screen here and see how this works. Now, if you don't know what a DC to DC boost circuit is, I would highly recommend that you check out my videos on how a DC to DC boost circuit works because that's going to prepare you for, for what's going on here. So the way a DC to DC boost circuit works, long story short, if you want to turn, let's say, five volts, which is this, into 25 volts, what you do is you send five volts before a coil. Now, the coil is going to store voltage in it because it's round and coiled and shit. So the way this is going to work is after the coil, we are going to short it to ground. So right after here, we're going to short it to ground. And this is going to be like stopping short in a car. So let's say you're driving at 20 miles an hour and you stop short. For that quick moment, you're going to jolt forward, and you're going to jolt forward more than the 20 miles an hour. So your body is going to move forward faster than 20 miles an hour that you were, um, that you, that you had been, uh, jolted, that you were driving prior to the jolt forward. And it's like stopping short. And the same shit go holds true for this. It's just like stopping short over and over again. So when, we're to, so when we're using a DC to DC boost circuit, we're gonna have five volts come through here. After the coil, there's going to be something that switches the ground. So over here on this chip, which is the backlight chip, we have a SW trays that switch. Two is the second switch. The first one is for a backlight for the LCD screen. The second one is gonna be switched for the keyboard backlight, and that's gonna switch it to ground. So it's gonna stop short, and for a quick second, we're going to have a spike of, let's say, 25 volts or 30 volts instead of five, because we uh, shorted it to ground, which causes the coil to put out a bunch of voltage really quickly, the same way that stopping short in a car causes you to jump forward really quickly. Now, it would be pretty uncomfortable if somebody kept stopping short hundreds of thousands of times every second, right? It would probably piss you off. Well, that's what we're going to do to the electrons over and over and over again. We're going to fucking torture those pieces of crap. And the way that that's going to happen, the way that we're going to turn that into a higher voltage is we have a diode over here, the diode, and then we have capacitors. The capacitors are going to store those spikes of 25 volts. So over here, you're going to have spikes of 25 volts that get stored in the capacitors like a battery. We have capacitors going to ground. The voltage is going to, the DC voltage is going to try to make its way to ground. It's going to really want to go to ground, but not be able to because the capacitor cannot pass DC because it has got that insulator material in the middle. So it's going to get slammed onto this plate over here. So you're going to have voltage slammed on the plate of the capacitor, and it's going to be stored there while it's trying to go to ground. The electrons, not only are we torturing them, we're also trusting the fact that they're so stupid 
that they have no idea that there's no way to get to ground. They're just going to keep slamming themselves into the plate. So we're going to have all these pulses at 25 volts stored over here. And since we have a diode over here that's only going to allow power to go through one way, it's not going to allow the voltage, the 25 volts we store here, to go back to ground. So we're going to have this switch. Let me just zoom. Let me just get this uh, full screen a little so that you can see better. So this over here is going to be the backlight chip. This is going to be 5 volts coming into the coil. The coil is going to have a lot of 5 volts stored over here. Then we're going to short to ground on this side, which is going to cause the coil to send these little spikes of 25 volts through. And because we're, we're trying to rip that voltage that's stored in the coil out as quickly as we can, same as stopping short in the car. Now, the, the spikes of 25 volts are going to be stored by the capacitor. And when this decides that it's going to short to ground again, when this chip decides to short the voltage in front of the coil to ground, it's not going to make the voltage that's inside of the capacitors go away because it cannot go back through the diode. It can only go one way to the right, not to the left here. So one of the first things that we have to check for here is that we get 5 volts on this part of the coil, on around L7720. So I'm going to turn this thing on. Hit the keys on the screen. We're going to look over here. And let's take a look. So R, where, where's, uh, where's my coil? L7720. That's going to be this. So we get 4.9 volts, but it's kind of going down. You see that? Not sure what's up with that. So we get voltage on the coil, but it's there, and then it's, but it's kind of there, but not really there. Leaky cap. Okay, if it could be a leaky cap, what would we get if it was a leaky cap? How would we check for that? Breaking the line to the backlight LEDs. Well, the thing is, we're not at the backlight LEDs because at pin one, we only have 4.8 volts. So there's only a couple of options here. What are the two things that would reduce our voltage at pin one? No keyboard backlight. Please tell me someone isn't paying 425 for this. Miles, Miles. Got to make up for all those SMCs and dead PCHs and CPUs somehow now, man. All right, what do we do? What do we do? R7783. All right, let's check R7783. So that's going to be over here. That's going to sit between PP5 ESO and the keyboard backlight. So this is a zero ohm resistor, which is being used in this case as a fuse. So let's see, on this side, 5.047, and on this side, 4.9, 4.8, 4.7. Someone says remove JTAG. No. <laughs> All right, so let's check, to somebody said check for a short. All right, so we're going to turn the machine off because we don't want to have power applied while we do this. Put the meter in diode mode and check on, I, let's see, PP5 ESO can't be shorted because it's turning on, obviously. Miles says just run PP5 ESO to the keyboard. No one adjusts it anyways. And if they bitch, just dremel a switch in the side of the computer. Someone's, I think, getting a little jealous at me making money off of this. That sounds like someone's trying to sabotage me. So there's no short and if on either side. And if we check the resistance of the resistor, let's see what we get here. We get m some millions of ohms. Oh, man, Miles is going to be mad if he saw how much I was getting paid to replace a resistor today. So it looks like we're going to be replacing a resistor. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this resistor and we're, this resistor is not resisting anymore. It's resisting a little too much, actually. We need to replace it with something that resists a lot less. Because this is resisting way too much. Which means it's not going to be welcome here. We're going to repeal and replace this resistor with one that resists less. That's what we're going to do. The PCB got scratched while he was testing that resistor. Unprofessional. No, that's not unprofessional, Paul. That's not unprofessional. This is unprofessional. 
This is unprofessional. A warranty. All right, so let's get the resistor replaced. I should start drawing trees on the motherboards. That would be that would be a really interesting warranty sticker. I keep getting these comments on Bob Ross on the YouTube channel, and I think that would be a fun way to make a warranty sticker. has backlights on my keys. Look at that. Look at that, Miles. Woo! That is beautiful. <laughs> so that's... That's a fix. That's a fix. 